Okay, I'd like to call this finance committee meeting to order. The first item is request for council action. We have 1361 budget amendments, 1362 adopting housing revolving loan fund agreement, 1363 expenditure over $15,000 traffic funding or transit funding, <clears throat> 1364 fair road change right away and paving, 1365 2013 concrete street repair. 1366, 2013 concrete pavement and joint ceiling. 1367, agreement with Arcadis South Court Tank Interior Coating. 1368, agreement with Cunningham Associates, <coughs> Wildwood, Beachwood Improvements. 1369, renewed public defender contract. 1370, policy city involvement with private stormwater retention systems. Um, this First one we have then is 1361 budget amendments. We have uh, from the finance department. Keith here. Yep. The, the, there's two items on here. The first one is something we were paid for. It wasn't anticipated revenue, but we were paid <coughs> for it. So the fire department would like additional revenue to, to pay out the salaries we paid out. The second one is donations that came through and need appropriated so that they can spend it. Move to approve. Second. Questions, Mark. Um, Keep the donations in 2011 and 12. Right, they didn't appropriate them at that time. They didn't, okay. they didn't need to spend them. Okay. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. 1362. Adopting Housing Revolving Loan Agreement CHIP. Is Annie? Uh, I'm filling in for Miss Sandy. Um, this agreement is with the state that we will create and administer a revolving loan fund for our housing related program income. The current agreement that we have on file with the state expired December 31st of 2012. And that is the reason for the emergency clause. We need to put the new agreement in place. Any questions? Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second, including the emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> 1363 expenditure over $15,000 fiscal year 2012 CDBG transit funding. Who's handling this one? Kimberly, you handling this one? Uh, no, I was told Keith was handling it. Keith, you're handling this one? I wasn't told Keith was handling it. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've been paying uh, the transit bus out of CDBG, partially out of CDBG and partially out of general fund for a number of years. This is our, our contribution to the county's uh, bus system. And it's been about 17500 every year? Yeah, consistently for the last three. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Move to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Uh, 1364 Fair Road, change right away of paving. Uh, oh, this is me. Um, <laughs> I had a conversation with the president of the now current president <coughs> of the fair board. If you remember last August, I think it was when we met with the fair board in discussions of you know things that we, we can collaborate on and things that the fair is doing. If you recall, the current fair road location, as on the drawing and as existing, are not the same. The fair road technically is over to the east on the drawing, probably about 20 feet, so it's not really exactly where it should be. Uh, so we were going to uh, talk to him about maybe making that modification. He had a meeting with the board and talked to them about possibly putting the plat where the road would go and where exactly would we want that road to be located. If you recall, the road currently by starts at Camelot. It takes a little bit of a bend and then goes down to Lafayette. I think after talking with Pat Pat and, and Nino a little bit, it might be better for us if the road just kind of came straight through, uh, where they currently <coughs> goes in the uh, Smith, it, it kind of comes, there's two entrances, there's one to the west and one to the east. If you go to the one to the west, it kind of goes straight through, and that kind of makes sense for traffic just to kind of go straight through, and then they would take over the uh, area that's on the bend, but we'd also need an easement with respect to the pump station that's located there. And I think Camelot would need an easement because their drive comes off that road to their property. I think the question is legally, is there any other issues for Camelot to have entrance off of that road? 
if it's not a dedicated right away if we vacate that so I think kind of the discussion was do we, do we want to do that first of all and second of all chip and sealing that road what that means is just like the county roads not tearing it out and putting concrete in the whole way or anything you know just having it where it's no longer gravel road it's it's going to be chip and sealed and I think over the years we've been putting gravel down on that road just because as you drive on it of course the gravel is going to come off and I don't know you know the cost over the years <coughs> what did you mention to me again of the amount of money we put in on stone on that road over the years every year with aggregate and crushed 304 it's been between six and ten thousand dollars and then the manpower and the loader and put that on there about every year now we, we, Nino had a quote I think to chip and seal the road coming from where hooks up where Lafayette has already paved a portion of the way all the way to Smith was about twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars and to do the other portion which is the uh, east side of the road, let's call it, with the bend and, and, and chip and sealing the area in front of the ticket booth, let's call it, uh, was 10000 So to do everything, it's $35,000. And what I was looking at, it, and I think Pat gave me some information, is we need some easements for the right-of-way to, when we do the East Smith in front of the fair, repave that. I think we need additional right-of-way. And we're trying, the appraisals aren't back yet, but the guesstimates around 5,000 or maybe a little more because there's temporary taking 7,500. So the question would be if we chip and seal everything, they relocate, uh, replant the right of way, grant us those easements, it's pretty close to a wash, but we don't know that yet. All the way. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for the public and refresh my memory, if we go forward with this, <clears throat> is this going to? Be an alternate route during the reconstruction of of Smith Road. Can this be used as an alternate route? Not an alternate route, but to to ease some of the traffic that's going to be. It could be for cars. It wouldn't be made for uh, for <coughs> trucks. Heavy trucks. Right. And I don't think trucks. My personal opinion is trucks probably wouldn't use it because I can't imagine right. somebody's trying to turn on the lot yet. Oh no no no. Because I, it, they can't make that turn at the other end. My my other question is on the portions that's not where we're straightening it out, the the years of putting down the, the, the aggregate, is that going to have to be tore out? I mean, it seems like it would be a pretty good base for, I mean, is that going to help with the cost or will that all that have to be tore out to be chip and sealed? The contractor did a brief uh, overview. <coughs> he thinks not. He thinks the uh, chip and seal is a layover. It's okay. solid as, as you just conveyed from, from the years of, of Running over it, and right. buying the aggregate. So, um, chip and seal would be the best way to go versus total resurfacing with, with the amount of money it would cost. No, I meant is is because of all the stone that we've put down. Is that going to be a good base for the chip and seal? It or is. Okay. Yes. Good. At this point. So hopefully that alleviate those those issues. <clears throat> and if you ever go to the fair during fair week with the dust that that creates, that's another right. big problem. And, and it could be used for cars. Right. Uh, the question is the speed limit and all that. Uh, that will have to be uh, implemented or, or what will be done to, to control that. And I don't know if they go any faster. They go pretty fast now with, without, without it. But um, that's kind of what the thoughts were. I didn't, I didn't know if council had any other suggestions, comments to regarding that or kind of still work with the fair board. Um, uh, Mr. Conrad is the fair board president. Uh, and um, I just have uh, one, one question. It's still not clear to me with the, the land that uh, the fair board has taken to expand its that area for the tractors and stuff like that to cause the road to move <coughs> to the west. Uh, is there going to be any consideration for that? I think it was originally, the road was originally, I mean, that was years ago. That had to be. I would have to defer to the city engineer. I mean, I don't know. That was, I don't know how many, in the 60s. Yeah, it was from 1960 or something. Yeah, 60s. Right? <coughs> so that was just done at the beginning like that. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't think they're, the road was just, nobody ever looked at the drawings, they just put the road right. in. Right. I see. <laughs> so that, that change will have to be done, uh, which I think will be, you know, make it legally correct. And then with respect to the chip and sealing our road and having the trade off between the easements we need to obtain and the temporary, I think, construction easements also on top of that, I think you, you mentioned in the email, the consideration will be very close if we were to do that. You say about Camelot, what's the... Uh, Camelot, I, I don't think the issue with Camelot is I think they entered their 
property off of that road. I don't. Do they have one off of Smith? They don't have an interest off of Smith, do they? No. no, no they so the question is going to be, either a an easement would have to be granted to them to enter, and also an easement for the pump station for us to get there to have access, which I don't think will be an issue okay. because we'd have you know to, to get on the property and do that now. I wouldn't imagine. The only question I have is for uh, Camelot's parcel. They don't. They have bought a public right of way, but they don't have access to a public right of way right now. That's a question. I don't know, I don't know if that causes problems in Mike. But yeah, Conrad Hanneberg is the president. Uh, he has spoken with the board once about this concept. They're okay with it. They didn't have really any issue with it. We didn't have anything <coughs> formal to present to them because we don't have anything formal yet to present to them. But we can move forward with the process of having a uh, survey uh, plat redrawn to show the rededication and the vacation of the current dedicated public right and the uh, new uh, dedicated to be dedicated public right would be filed. And they're okay with uh, the concept if we need to use that as a, an alternative route during the construction? No, it's a public road. They have no. And I don't think there's an issue with that. Cars may do it. I, again, I don't envision trucks just because I don't want to make these turns. Smaller trucks, maybe, but I think it'd be more of a hassle for them. They don't like going through the square, and it would kind of like the turn radius is not there for semis to turn in that. On Lafayette, that. on Smith, yes, they can turn, but Lafayette, it comes downhill a little bit. I don't think they would be. I thought I remember at our meeting they were concerned about cars cutting through there. They asked about speed bumps and I don't know. I understand what you're saying. <coughs> I mean, speed bumps probably could be put in there, but I don't know. Not it's not really good. If it's a dedicated, they do that. Yeah, they do. Right. Not put them on. Not I just want to make sure they understand yeah. that it's going to come in handy for us. And well, they, right now, the people go through, even with the potholes. I guess they still. Can, can we prohibit certain size trucks? I mean, you know, the, the, we have the right as a city to prohibit. Well, local local streets by ordinance are um, uh, trucks are prohibited if they're greater than five ton okay. in weight. So, I mean, yeah, a smaller box truck, things like that. A, a commercial semi without any load at all right. is over five tons. Okay. Some of the larger, um, some of the larger uh, trucks plumbing trucks, uh, tow trucks even for that right. matter, are greater than five tons. So as, as the municipality, we can you know maybe ease the fair boards, some of their concerns by just saying we're going to put up signage prohibiting the Ohio City Ordinance. Uh, prohibiting trucks on it? Well, prohibiting, uh, per the city ordinance, the, the certain size trucks. Right. Yeah, no trucks greater than five tons. Right. Correct. But I think... The, if we do chip and seal it, I think that would even be a benefit to the, to the community center. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have a lot of events there. Not everybody comes from Lafayette. To get <coughs> they come from Smith, too. Right. Uh, that'll provide an, another access way, at least for cars and things, to to enter that and use it. Yeah. Any special consideration for Fair Week? Because I, I really didn't know if that was a, a, a city road until I joined council. So then I, I, I know people just kind of wallygag across the street. Is there going to be a consideration? I think we mean when you say consideration. For well, uh, okay, for Fair Week, are we going to stop uh, through traffic, for example, and leave it for just parking and the like? It'll be no, there's no parking right now, I don't think, uh, is permitted on that. But during Fair Week, everybody parks off to the, to the well, th those of us who come to visit <laughs> that don't stay there the whole week. They, uh, last we year, park, they, they stop that. At least from where the fence is, where the community center starts, all the way down to Smith, there is no. Yeah, they had it taped off, I believe. No yeah. parking on the side of the street. And, you know, okay, but what about back in the field and stuff like that? Well, that's, there's parking yes, that's still out here. That way up back in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll, we'll have to be concerned about people crossing the street mm -hmm. and the like. To so they've been the doing it for whatever forty years. It's just okay. going to be there. So what are we be, voting on tonight? Well, I guess if we want to give direction. And I guess Mayor, um, as far as the, Pat Patton, as far as starting the the plat or the survey to relocate that uh, dedicated public right away, we to didn't where want to get too far down the down right. this path without support. Oh, John John's had some of these conversations with Nino and Patrick and I, but 
and if not, right. involve the rest of council. Oh. Now, now, there is one other notation on the <coughs> plat, Patrick. Correct, yeah. On the plat that states that the county commissioners have to approve any hard surface that's applied there. So we're also going to have to get not only this, the fair board, but the county commissioners as well, blessing on this when we want to get it played out. I mean, I think I said it when we met with the fair board that I'm definitely supportive of improvement of that, that road for not only the fair week or access for community events there, but just an additional option for uh, you know, residents to cut across that, that section. And uh, you, did you say 35000 to do the whole? Area that's <coughs> 10, 25,000 25 to do the whole west side, okay. 2100 feet, 20, and, then yeah, and, and then to 10, do that little dog leg that we currently own by Camelot, okay. there is another town which includes so a bigger apron up front there. That's why it's more money because it's a large area. And was there any comment about the <coughs> entrance on Lafayette that they I know they requested in the past, maybe putting a turning lane? Has that been talked about? No, yet? that's okay. there'd be different, different okay projects. I mean, the goal is for us to assist them, but then they assist us. And sure, I know sure. they have a big list of wants, but the question is. Right. <laughs> and when you say season. chip and seal, that's <coughs> essentially asphalt, or is it another mix that maybe I'm not? It's like a county road. I don't it know. It is. Well, it's exactly like the okay. They have the bigger stone, bigger okay. aggregate in it with the. the Put some tar down. In tar in it. Okay. Put the stone in or roll it in. And longevity, do you have any idea what uh, longevity is on that type of application? Depending on the traffic, I know that we, when we talked, I had asked Patrick if there was a possibility of having 8,000 cars or more, and we thought that that wouldn't even be close from what we understood. So that yeah, it, it is in no way like an asphalt road. Um, you know, we're going to have to re revisit it every several years, I don't know how many, but there should be a ton of usage. So it might get a little extra life out of it. But it's kind of just an inexpensive way to, to improve a little bit without biting the bullet and then putting a little paint in there. And honestly, every year with the loader, I mean, some of the council members understand them. The mayor and I were down to the garage, and we've had to bring the loader over and haul stone in. And that's been every year when Bill's sitting here, he can tell you that we send the you know, loader over there with uh, loads of rock every year in aggregate. And that just accumulates, so I'm in favor of this. And that just washes out when it rains. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've cut across there many times, zigzagging through those holes and stuff. I mean, something we can like close it a few times <coughs> because it's so bad through the winter. At least it can stay open. So I guess if everybody's comfortable with it, you know, we could start at least the process, and I can maybe talk <coughs> to the the board president again and say this is what we're we're thinking about, and get their okay, and then, you know start the process of, of replanting the road and then in this and I guess it would be in this late spring early summer if it's put the chip and seal down I'm okay with it. as long as we have the right agreements and everything written okay with it? I'm okay with it I, but I, I, I do remember that meeting and I think maybe just want to remind the, the board you know that it's a public road and we may use it when we work on Smith and we just run that by me because yeah, it, it, yeah. it seemed like that conversation that we had, they asked for some things that weren't public road. And right, maybe right. they do know, but it'd probably be a good idea to just... They asked for a lot of things. I was, <laughs> when I was there. <laughs> That's why maybe you have everything that we want in writing. Right. You know, no, I think it, we would do that. I think at least uh, Mr. Hannenberg is going to work towards, he understands the, uh, the cooperation that we're trying to achieve, okay. the reality that we're able to achieve. So. All right. Well, we'll we'll do that. And Pat, I'll I'll touch base with you next couple of weeks, whatever. If I can talk to the, the board president and let him know what's going on. Okay. All right. Next one is the uh, thirteen oh sixty five, which is bids for the two thousand and thirteen concrete street repair. Pat. This is our annual project. Uh, this year we're asking for uh, five hundred thousand. Uh, this is the individual slab replacements. <coughs> 475,000 of that would be for street money and 25,000 from the water fund group uh, repair of streets that had to be uh, dug up due to water breaks in this past year. Now, how many slabs would that replace approximately? This will get years? us, uh, we do it in square yards, about 7,600 square yards. Um, I'm 
sure I, the, the number of individual slabs, they vary from width and length and that kind of stuff, but uh, it, it, it'll be the most ever. Okay. Any questions? Uh, do you have a list of streets that you plan on uh, touching? Or? I do. I can certainly forward those to everyone. Thank you. Appreciate that. Can we add to it? Well, I mean, I'll bring it. I mean, this count. I mean, Pat, could you handle additional? I mean. To me, you know, we're making some major improvements over in our industrial area, and there are a couple other residential roads that are being improved. But uh, you know, uh, speak for Ward Three, there's areas that need improvement. But even if we could add a, additional funds to change a higher number of concrete blocks, I think makes a big difference on the overall road. And some of those roads still have a good 20 years to them. But uh, you know, I provided Pat a nice little list of Ward Three, but I know there's limited amount of money, and that was brought up. Can we increase that at all? I just wanted to. Well, I think it depends on the bid. When you bid it out, too, sometimes you have extra. Uh, when the bids come back, there's. We do. We've been fortunate the last couple of years. Um, price is coming pretty, pretty yeah. good, and we're able to add to it. Um, in terms of adding from the start, Mark, we, we could probably hit a little bit more. Um, I didn't want to, at least this year, go too far over that just because of the workload here. This okay. Is a, Oh, that's fine. Pretty uh, labor intensive project. It's, it's you know, required basically one of our inspectors full time to prepare the list, measure it, and follow the contract around. And everything we got going on this year, I don't know that. Okay. Well, last year the contractor that was used, I mean, I, I it's unbelievable results, I think. Right. Yeah, I was just very amazed. It was over 120 locations. Right. Yeah, I mean, who was just, the contractor last year? Was that first? It was uh, construction mm -hmm. king. Amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. at least for Brandywine, because I tried the, the the way they did that and how fast they did it. Right. It was just amazing. Yeah, as Nino mentioned, in comparison, last year we did about 120 different locations. Uh, this year we should be in that ballpark, not a little more. <laughs> Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion or comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Mr. Carries. 1366 bids for the 2013 concrete pavement joint ceiling. That. Uh, again, this is an annual contract. Uh, this one, the best analogy is it's kind of like changing the oil in the car. Uh, it needs to be done uh, to maintain and you know, preserve the pavements for a longer life. And we're asking for 75000 this year, which is uh, what we asked for last year as well. Yeah, approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, I'll vote carries. 1367, agreement with Arcadia South Court Elevated Tank Interior Coating. That. This is one of the projects that uh, uh, our Arcadis, when they did our uh, uh, recent project list, is a five-year plan uh, put near the top. I would like to go forward with this. What we're going to look at doing is uh, similar to what we did uh, with Progress Drive, uh, go with a metallized surface, which is not a, a typical paint. It's actually a process where you metallize the interior uh, this will be our third tank to have that. Uh, Progress is the second, and the other is a uh, well, was Coons. Uh, I'm sorry, a bottle of art. Uh, and, and our, our water superintendent bill and all water departments, they're very much in favor of this. They, they, they strongly endorse this. It is a little more expensive than coating, but we think it lasts much longer. What's the quote that you think <coughs> engineers <coughs> estimate on that? We will find out when they do the work. We. Uh, we really don't have one. One thing, this is kind of unique, and there's not a lot of contractors that do this. Um, I can give you a comparison. The progress tank, which was completed in 2010, uh, that's 1.25 million gallons. Uh, that was 184,000 for this. Uh, the, the South Court tank is half a million gallons, so it's less than half of that. Um, that's about, we couldn't find any comparables in, in Northeast Ohio here if anyone else has, has done it in the, in the past year or two. So, what We had this come up, I mean, we, I think we talked about this <coughs> a few years ago. And I think it was about 115, 125,000. Yeah, that, for the moment, <laughs> I guess that's where we'd, we'd be at. Like I said, uh, 184 for a tank that was more than double the size. So, just doing the... 
so the health people are there. This, I mean, this is just to get the specs. I mean, will it be done this year? Yes. And then there won't be really any interruption because you just pump the water rather than have it in the tower. Correct. Right? Yeah, most of the, the cost uh, for Arcadis is, is to put together the plan that allows us to take the tank offline. We've never done that before. Uh, so we will be kind of riding on the pressure of the system provided by our new pump station at uh, Coombs. One of the reasons we had to get that uh, first so we can use that to, to the South Court tank is our high pressure district. It's most of the southern part of the city, a good number of residents there. Um, we need to get that pump station done first. Um, but they will be laying out the plan as to how we do it. There's a, a bunch of backup systems and whatnot. So that's kind of what we're paying for the expertise for. Question? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Uh, 1368 agreement with Cunningham Associates Wildwood Beachwood drainage improvements. Pat, you're still on. This one, uh, we've had a uh, significant drainage problem in this area, the Forest Meadows, for quite some time. We've done some surveys of the residents there, and on average, there's about three streets, uh, a portion of Beechwood, uh, Wildwood, and a uh, street to the north there that's speaking online right now. Um, but Global on average, uh, there's about a dozen houses that get flooded basements every four or five years, uh, going back uh, 25 years or so. We did a study last year to kind of determine what we believe the problem is. Uh, and basically, it's some undersized piping. Uh, this project will um, add piping. It's a, it's a relief storm sewer, so to speak. It'll be routed from Beachwood through Reagan Park over to the creek there. Uh, we think it's a significant problem doors to this project to do that drainage over there. Questions? I just have a comment. Uh, there's two residents here from that are directly affected with that. Thank you for coming this evening. I know that uh, you've been very patient and thank you and I'm glad to see that we're making the step in the right direction. Okay. John, I think they had a question. Yes. Pat, Pat, this is relief <coughs> storm sewers that will run from Beachwood over the park, right? Correct. Yeah, be no, no store, no relief to any of the three streets you mentioned. Pardon me? No, no relief at the streets you mentioned. You, you're, in other words, you're taking it from, from where the streets put it into the into the storm sewer. From there out, you're going to do something. You're not going to do anything to the streets. Well, we'll be, we'll have to cross the street with the storm sewer. Um, I, I've got the, the plan I can show you that might make more sense. We can okay. spread it out and show you. Okay. Um, it does include, uh, for some of the folks on Wildwood, uh, some rear yard drainage because they had some significant problems with the backyard, you know, getting flooded. Um, but basically, it, it's you know, kind of a relief sewer to take all that extra water from this system through Reagan Park. I'm not sure I'm answering your question there. Well, we, I'd like to see your plan. Sure. I guess maybe that's the easiest way to do it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> 13069, they renew the public defender contract. Mr. Hubert? The public defender's office forwarded to me a contract to renew the use of their office. They just went through a change in personnel so that the new public defender is a little late getting this out to us. This renews the contract we had in place last year. Nothing has changed. Uh, I think, John, you asked about whether we actually have to have this done by April 1st. We don't. We'll continue just fine. If you approve it, it becomes effective on its regular course. I'll get it to the public defender. And well, my only concern was we pass it from finance and it goes directly on council, which, which I think we never like that just because there's not enough time if something pops up, you know, it's already approved. I mean, I don't, but that's but the uh, case. The fact of the matter is Mr. Huber got it uh, midweek last uh -huh. week, and it, it, their date of compliance uh -huh. was 4-1, which was not really fair to us. I mean, right. That's right. things don't move that fast. Well, that's why I was asking the question is why, you know, I never like to add things to the agenda because that right. doesn't give time for 
from the digestion of the... That's right, John. That's why Kathy gave me the look when I walked. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the look. The look, okay. Mr. Huber, this is, the, this is the exact same contract that the, the public defender last year presented to us. Yes, sir. That's going to have to just be an annual renewal? Right. Thank you. Some, somehow we found our way without a contract yeah. for, for sure. years and years, but now we have to have one each year. Correct. So, I, I mean, I guess it's up to council, but I mean... So nothing is really pop. No, nothing's going to change between now and next. Well, I mean, I, I don't mind approving it now, but I think we'll vote on the next council meeting. It's on tonight's council well, meeting, but... It's already prepared. It's already prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she can't and, also, it anyway. and also, to <laughs> avoid it, I put on my calendar for my end-of-year <laughs> stuff, so I'm talking about it at the end of the year. So it's Greg telling us he's fine for the next council meeting then? No. No? Okay. He's, he's fine. Kathy's he's fine. fine. I'm just saying yeah, don't yeah, yeah. I just, I do have a question. Greg, is there any way we could get them to maybe make this a multi-year contract? Is it, would there be any benefit to doing that so we don't have to go through this fire drill every year? I guess um, there <coughs> Directives come from Columbus, and I guess the answer is no. Okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> and that's the gentleman last year that was was here. The public defender ex explained right. that that you know, again, we went years without having that, but now it has to be an annual. It has to be annual. Right. Any other questions? Would you approve? Second. With, With the emergency clause. Second. My second includes emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. The next item uh, is 1370, the policy for city involvement with private uh, storm sewer retention systems. I think talking to Mark, we may pull this out and throw it into, and I don't know if it's, um, I guess it might be streets and sidewalks rather than water utilities uh, because it deals with. The past. I mean, this, this is a topic that we've discussed maybe four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. I think we had it go through streets and sidewalks at that time. Because it, it deals with uh, not actually providing water, but it's dealing with the storm water. Right. water. Right. So you're, you're with that? Mm -hmm. it? Yeah, I'm going to get with Kathy sometime this week and hopefully have a, to, to just discuss the sidewalk issues too. And sometime in April we have a, a meeting so we can add that to the agenda. You had a busy committee there. Yeah. And ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you do we, uh, we talked about this back in 2005. I did do a memorandum on it. I've got some copies for you to look at now to hand out. Um, and there are some legal issues that bear on this. Yeah, I remember talking about it. Uh, I think it was up in, in your ward, as a matter of fact. Uh, some of the dredging of some of the uh, current ponds, whether they be used for retention of stormwater or not, and the issues associated with taking on their liability. Right. And Mr. Patton put together a draft back at that time that I thought was pretty good uh, about how we uh, could handle these situations. And I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lengthy discussion on it. Um, I was trying to gear more towards the actual inlet and outlets function of that, maybe not the dredging part, because you know, this is more towards private lakes, which is a retention basin, a huge one. And I believe myself that. You know, the city needs to play a role of, in some capacity. And whatever we find out is something that everybody's comfortable with. But, uh, you know, there's, I think we just need to play a role in that. And I know there's going to be lengthy discussions. So well, I mean, I, we can have lengthy discussions, but I, I, Mr. Huber already ruled on that because you're right. That, that came up a couple, well, back in 2005 or <coughs> seven when, when the, the one, uh, homeowner association, we were dredging uh, our, the association I belonged to, and we were trying to, at that time, because it's so costly, to involve the schools when the, when a new school was built and, and the city to, to help with it, and he, he did make a ruling which I, you know, at least the people in our association understood. Uh, I, I might, uh, that was in 2005, the, that policy that Mr. Patton um, submitted and that was in the prior administration. This administration is going to cause the city greater liability. We're not favorable to right. it. I'd address what Mark is concerned about, and it is a concern. If we get into a, a plan like the plan Pat 
drew up back in 2005, where we go in and do work directly, we lose our statutory sovereign immunity and we become directly responsible. What we can do is determine that there's a nuisance and work with the property owners to correct problems that have risen to the level of being problematic and if we can't get cooperation, then we can go in and fix it and assess the properties and at the same time preserve our sovereign immunity for the, what we're doing. In a nutshell, that was some of what the council was called upon to try to balance when we talked about this back in 2005. Yeah, I remember we had several meetings. <clears throat> right. And for the people that, that are concerned about it, the city did provide assistance and actually replacement of the inlet and outlet basins if it needed. You know, and I know down in our, our situation, I know that at least the inlet was, was failing and the city did replace that at the city's cost. We, we just this past year, 2012, had a situation at Andrews and Damon where they had to rebuild the dam and we used some of the city staff tree to remove some of the trees that, that were decayed and in the way, as well as to reseed and, and help with that. So, so we do try to balance right. some of their interests versus the city without assuming the liability and responsibility that goes along with actually getting in and doing the work. I know if we leave it up to the 100% uh, of the private community, at least with one of the associations in Forest Meadows back there, that leg will sell in before anybody can afford to dredge it. So well, we dredge we ours. <laughs> well, you know, that's because you have people living around it. You know, you get Forest Meadows Lake there. It's you know 45 bucks a year. Can't dredge much with that. Right. Okay. And no way to assess anybody. So we have to consider those things as well. So we'll bring up those issues, revisit that in your committee sure. and see if there's any modifications. <clears throat> All right, we have two uh, discussion items left. We have uh, Bill Boyles from, uh, by the Labor Management. Go ahead. Yeah, my, my biggest, I guess I just come here uh, representing some of the part-time employees in regards to health care and getting their hours cut. Uh, I come with a lot, I have a lot of information, but I was, personally kind of warned by some co-workers to watch what I brought up here so I guess I'm coming here to ask is there any foreseeable you know anything in the foreseeable future that we could do to help out with the part-timers that have their hours cut well, I, get, um. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the, the question is the uh, it's from council perspective I mean that's not our job Exactly. It's an administration job. I mean, we, we can listen to what your concerns are, um, uh, and we could uh, try to think of ways to assist, but that's, we really, our job is just appropriating funds for the city and uh, providing, you know, money to each individual department to use the way they, you know, <coughs> choose to use it. So we understand the concern. We understand the, the law, that, the new law that's been implemented uh, as far as uh, for the federal government and the effect that has on various people from both the number of hours worked and the health care costs associated with, you know, people who work over 29 hours now, and that is a, that's a great burden for not only our community, but every, every community to take that on. And, you know, but our, we don't have, you know, any ability to do anything with respect to that, so we understand the concern, and I guess that's, you know, we appreciate you bringing it to us and, and voicing your concern, but that's pretty much what we can do. It's, administrative function it's not a, a council function did you have anything that's different than that bill <laughs> well as i was telling an attorney down the road the other day i i don't think i could speak quite as beautifully as you do <laughs> but um I don't, well no i mean it's you know it's an unfortunate situation that a lot of communities are put into and not, maybe a lot of businesses are put into and i don't know you know from us what the best solution is a solution has been presented uh, through the administration and that's the solution that we have. And, and I can tell you, everybody on co I can't, I can only speak for myself, but I believe that most people on council and the administration and the law director uh, who, who have to interpret this law, uh, it wasn't an easy, easy thing for the administration to do. And I, and I know at the time, 
Council had all kinds of questions for the ad administration that they had answers for us. Uh, it, like I said, it wasn't an easy decision for them, and, and like Mr. Coyne said, you know, private industry and municipalities are, are, are all facing the same things. What I would suggest is, is you know, contacting your 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 state and federal legislators and and. And I'm not talking, you know, repealing Obamacare because there's a lot of good things about that. But I think that, you know, at some point in time, there's going to be some issues, amendments that's going to have to be made to it that, that because it is affecting a lot of people. Not only is it affecting, you know, your your associates uh, having their hours cut, it's it's affecting the municipalities on losing that labor force, those hours that, that you know, we just didn't, the administration just didn't, have those hours in place just to benefit you. It was needed hours uh, to to accomplish projects in the in the city. So I don't know. I just want to reiterate uh, everything that Danny said and emphasize: contact your congressmen and your senators. Uh, they they're the ones who can enact that law and change that law. There's there's really nothing at our level that we can do. I I, I have tried to be in contact with the. Uh, shared Brown, but I just didn't know if there's something the city could do. Granted, this is a, a federally mandated law, but it's the city's decision to cut their hours back when there's money available. You know, I guess it's a matter of drawing the line as to what employees you'd have work those hours. And I, I guess I'm really looking for something to do. What can we do to keep the workforce that we have now? The the money and time that we've invested in training get licensing for some of the employees that we have that are currently looking for you know other jobs that never were before mm -hmm. we've had some people leave you know I'm just trying to avoid more people leaving to see if we could do something to help that situation well yeah I mean if there's a solution I'm, I'm sure the administration is looking for it uh, because I know that as everybody mentioned we don't want to lose workforce that it just affects the services that's being provided to the residents uh, I don't have the answer. Uh, you know, I, I think the mayor has been looking at this, has been talking to many different people regarding the solutions to it, and right now that is the solution, unfortunately. I'm sure if another solution, you know, raises its head and provides an ability to, you know, either increase the hours or, or maintain the, the workforce we have, that'll be implemented. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, we don't really have any kind of answer for you as far as what, what we could do, but, I mean, I know that... Uh, I spoke with the mayor about this on a few occasions, and you know, unfortunately, we're put in a situation where that's the answer. Now, the decision is up to him what to do with respect to either getting rid of people or whatever. But I think this was the one that kept as many people as possible without having to lay off people. So, and I do think, you know, Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong. We did say we're going to have to see how it goes for this year to see if we need to make some adjustments or. We don't know how we've it's already made adjustments with the uh, Teamsters and added more part-time people to fill in the blanks of those. That doesn't help with the hours that are cut, but the the law does not permit <coughs> us to work greater than 29 hours without providing health care, and that's for the 60 some part-time folks we have. Um, that would be another half of what we're paying already, which would be about a million dollars. Yeah, we're about two million right now. To a million. We're two million now for 120 employees, so if you do it again by half, you're talking another million dollars. We don't have a million dollars, and there's no way we can grant greater than an average of 29 hours a week without granting health care. The two are inter interlinked with one another, and as, as I told them in our meeting with their union rep, um, I, I wish there was some way we could find around it, but so far this is what our um, labor attorney has, has advised us we're mandated to do well, that or provide health care. Well, it's not a million dollar one time, it's a million dollar every year. Every year. <coughs> plus increases on top of it. That's the, the problem. I think the big issue is it's an ongoing expense. And, Correct. Uh, yeah. You can't sustain that. And I know it, it, it's you know an easy answer for me to say contact your, your state and your federal legislators. Uh, this is the immediate impact that, that part-time employees are seeing. Uh, the other issue that's going to be coming up in 2014, which, I, like I said, I think if we, as a nation, get together and, and you know, any bill that's signed into law 
can always have amendments to it and, and changes be made. It's you know, I, I I believe as an American that's that's the way things should be done, but you know, 2014, and you know, the private industry and municipalities, if they're not, I mean, it's not. My question to, to Mayor Hanwell initially and to, to the law director was, well, can these people opt out of say of trying something and say, well, I don't I don't want health care. That's fine, but. In 2014, if you work over 29 hours, whether it be for the city or any place, either that municipality or that business is going to have to provide you health care, or you are going to have to provide your own health care or be assessed for it. So there's a lot of changes that I think that's, and like I said, I, I believe that you can call it Obamacare, health care issue, whatever it is. I think there's a lot of good things to it. But there's some things that need to be uh, addressed that, that are going to hurt a lot of people. So don't take that lightly as far as contacting your, your, your representatives. Uh, you, there's a lot Kim, of ways you can Kimberly, do it. Kimberly, Greg Hannon, and I met with uh, Representative Renacy mm -hmm. two weeks ago at his Wadsworth office and shared this with him as well as he shared with us that overwhelmingly what he's hearing from businesses, governments, Everybody is that the, you know this cut from like 35 to 29, or some were anything under some were considering part time anything less than 40. So in their case, it was going from 39 to 29. 20, 29 um, is one of the biggest issues they have to deal with, and um, they know that the economy and the well-being of the workers is at issue here, but until until the federal government can do something to resolve it for us, we're, we're very limited as to what we can do. We appreciate you coming and voicing your concern. That's, uh, that's tough to do sometimes, so we appreciate that. I think we all share with your frustration. I just wish we had some better answer for you. Yeah, I, I mean, I have options. I, I guess the, uh, you know, getting a hold of state senate and stuff like that is, I'm, I'm also kind of curious to what I can really discuss being that it's a, it's not necessarily a union issue, but there's probably lines that would be crossed if I discussed the options outside of a union contract. So maybe we just meet privately with the mayor and discuss some of the other stuff we have with the administration and go from there. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. The other discussion item we have is a request to acquire 244 Medina Street and 408 East North Street. Mr. Vogel. Um, we wanted to acquire these properties through the Land Utilization Act. Uh, our ultimate goal was to demolish them. Uh, the one on North Medina Street, the owner would sign. That would be a very easy one to do. He, he's fine with us <coughs> demolishing it with the funds. He can sign off. The one on East North Street, that's a little bit that's less straightforward. Um, I've made a lot of calls to everybody who would be involved with this, and I can't find anywhere where this, this person's been evicted out of that property yet. So if we acquire that one, we may have to evict that person. I don't know if we want to get involved with that. But that one would definitely, if we could demolish that one, that would improve that neighborhood as well. Um, that's kind of like a war right down there on East North Street. But the uh, uh, county prosecutor's offered this to us. He says that uh, the one on the uh, North Medina Street one has already gone through two sheriff sales with no bids, so we can have that. But the one um, four oh eight, they're just telling us that the one on East North Street is about to go. So if we tell them that we want to acquire it, then once that's done, they really go through the second sale, then we could also have that one. Well, I think it's always very dangerous for a government to get involved in displacing their current tenant or residents. Uh, even though it may be a deplorable house, it's still better than the street. Yeah, I assumed they were the person who was gone, but I couldn't find evidence of that today. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's yeah. They're gone? I think the house is empty. Well, it depends if it's empty. I mean, there's still a process you have to go through. I guess we have to get more information on that one. I mean, I think the, the 244 Medina Street, if the owner of the properties understands the current state of the structure, and it's going to be the, a benefit to, for that structure to disappear. It makes sense. The other one, I don't know, I'd wait to make sure the 
that's vacated. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be uh, not only a, uh, a target for vandalism, but you know, we want to. Yeah, all I can find was that the, I guess the county, uh, they eventually evict these people when they foreclose to a tax foreclosure, but they're slow about it. It's, it's not been done. Okay. Did we determine the last time of what the deal is with taxes? Are we responsible for those delinquent taxes then? Uh, <laughs> what I could tell through the Land Reutilization Act, no. Unless we sell it. <laughs> From, I, I could go ask them about that with the um, the weeds we had on the, uh, the, the weed assessment we had on the other one. And uh, we, weren't, we weren't responsible for delinquent taxes, but um, we might be responsible for current year. Current year taxes, but the delinquents get wiped out as the law, my understanding of it. So you want to close in January? The <laughs> <laughs> time is just right. First, okay. Second. First, the officer closed. Um, do we have something? I got two things. I, I agree with the demolition of the house. I know it's at the other house that you're speaking about, and I think that if we can, once it's demolished, work toward getting a house rebuilt, which is what I think we discussed, something that fits into the neighborhood. I think every every single one of those um, improvements is an overall improvement for that neighborhood and the people in that ward. And I think that you know what you're doing, I think, is, is um, significant. And work with the county, and if we can eventually, a year or so down the road, have a home there that people can move in and, and live in, then I think for Brian Hilberg's ward and the people that live there, that will be that will be a, a great improvement. And, and the only thing I want to add is I, I also appreciate you guys coming in, and I think it's it's pathetic in the sense that you 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 come and all that you know when you all you're going to get is sympathy, but you know the aspects of the law the mayor's explained and John has explained better than I can. It's one of the most unfortunate parts about the law that that not only the city government and businesses are stuck trying to work with, and the sad thing is is that far away political parties do things without often recognizing or have to even look at what it does to real people. You know, folks like that have worked here for the city and gone through training and committed themselves to work here and and then have to do, you know, face what y'all are facing. And and I feel bad, you know, I, I think we all do that when you come and you sit and you present and we're just hands tied. And I know that, you know, we know the administration's done the very best job they can do because you have to balance out the finances and the service now in in the in the in the view of this law. And uh, so I, I, I hate to say it, I sympathize with you and I think that you know when we train people and people are working hard and then they have to move along <coughs> because of what is in a what in the reality is almost an arbitrary number set somewhere far away and we have to live with it. And we always say Call your call your congressman and call your senator, and hopefully they'll hear you. The so 244 is a vote, mm -hmm. and then the other one, of course, this will get more information. Yeah. All right. And then we have an executive session. Wait, wait, anything else to come before finance before we have that motion? I'll make a motion that we go into executive session for the purpose of land acquisition and pending eminent litigation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. We will not return. Aye.